church say amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Brother Reggie, for the introduction. I feel like the guest, uh, the guest speaker. <laughs> It says he was hungry. And he looked up and he saw a fig tree. Saw a fig tree. And it was full of leaves. Full of leaves. And you know, of course, Jesus being as human as we are, uh, he said, Well, there's breakfast. And you know how when you first when you get hungry, you're already hungry. But then when you pull up in front of Chick fil A, you get even hungry. Right? Oh, man, somebody died. 
saw this beautiful fig tree. There we go. As he saw, saw this beautiful fig tree, he started getting hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And sometimes when we get hungry, we get, we get a little mean, don't we? And I'm sorry, that's not the right word. We get a little frustrated, right? <laughs> a little frustrated. And so, lo and behold, he went to the tree, got to the tree, and it was full of leaves. However, that was a problem. It was full of leaves, but the story says there were no figs. That was a problem, wasn't it? That was a problem. And, and Jesus, being so disappointed with the fig tree, that the word says, and it's also uh, over in Mark also, he says that he cursed the tree and said that you never gonna have any fruit ever again. That was kind of that was kind of harsh, wasn't it? <coughs> that was kind of harsh, but the old tree just being a tree and it didn't have any any fruit, and especially when Jesus came by. And he cursed the tree. Hmm. Now, if you think that's a problem, if you think that's a problem, here's the thing I spent all week scratching my head on. Not only did the did the fig tree not have any any uh, fruit on it. Let's see if I can find the verse. Uh, but now if you go into the account in Mark, it says that it was not the time for the figs to even be there. It was not the season for the fruit. It was out of season. Man, that thing kept me scratching my bald head all week long. How in the world is he going to get mad <coughs> at the fig tree? Curse the fig tree. What is the tree all the way down to the roots? And it wasn't even time for the pigs. Got you scratching your head too, right? I'm glad you're scratching your head because, uh, man, that's the, that's the, that thing is deep. Now, let me take that thing a little further. When he cursed the fig tree, he didn't just cut the tree down, but he said that it withered all the way down to the roots. Now there was a passage in Hosea, you know, I'm not going to be long, that, that says that, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase it. It says if you cut the tree, if you cut the tree down, there's hope that the tree will sprout back out. It's in Hosea, look it up and you get home. But if you if, but if you destroy the roots of the tree, there is no hope. So when he, when, he, when he cursed the tree all the way down to the roots, he was saying that there was no hope. They deep in it. And yet you've got to keep in mind that Jesus never did anything wrong. So he was, he was okay in doing that. And, 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 and Sister Harmon would look at me like, God, what's going on here? Let me take it a little further. Then I'm, 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 I'm. It wasn't even his tree. Golly. How you gonna get mad at somebody else's tree? <laughs> See, I had a good time this week, right? Let me see if I can unpack some of this stuff. First of all, if you go and study the, how, how a fig tree works, the first thing that happens with a fig tree is it starts to have seeds on it uh, uh, for the figs. And then once the seeds start coming on the tree of the fig tree, then the leaves come. It's the seeds or uh, 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 even, uh, as we would call the little figs, right? The little figs of all started coming, starts to come on the tree. And then after the little, the little figs start showing up, then the leaves would, would, would come.
I'm on the tree. So, so the idea is, when you see the leaves on the fig tree, the figs are already there. And there was no figs. And so, even more than that, it was out of season. And so it had leaves ahead of time. So the tree was trying to fool everybody ahead of time. It was the great pretender. It was the great pretender. And so he was doing this. Jesus just didn't have hands to do stuff just because he could do it. He, 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 and it was time for him to go to the cross. So he, he you know, if you know you're getting ready to die, are you going to really waste any time? No. So what he was saying was, uh, in, in a lot of ways, that I understand not only what's going on now, but I understand what's going to happen in the future. So, so let me tell you, I'm going to take care of the future right now. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. Because I already know what's going to happen. This tree is perpetrating a fraud. Now, if you read your Bible, everybody still with me? If you read your Bible, you'll find out that that is one of the worst things that God hates. He cannot stand a person that's perpetrating a fraud, better known in the Bible as a hypocrite. Amen. And that tree was being hypocritical. It looked pretty on the outside. It looked pretty from afar off. But when it came down to the tree doing what it was supposed to do, and that was the bad things, that's why I was put here, not to look pretty. It was perpetrated a fraud. Well, who do you think he was pointing at? See, Jesus' worst enemies were the scribes and the Pharisees. And they look good on the outside. Jesus said they, they, they were nothing but a bunch of leaves. Yeah. Whew. But when it came down to what they were created for, when it came down to what the tree was created for, when it came down to what the church folks was created for, they were perpetrating a fraud. And Jesus said, that's the one thing I won't deal with. And he didn't cut the tree down. What did he do? He willed it from the roots. See why I was stretching this old ball here this week? Man, I heard that. <laughs> Man, that thing gets sick. See, the worst thing we can do toward God, oh, you get, you get the application right. The worst thing we can do toward God is to pretend to be what we're not. Whatever you do, let it be real. And remember the old song used to say that? Whatever you do, let it be real. If you ain't Christian, Jesus was saying, be a real Christian. If you love God, love God. If you love the world, you might as well go ahead and love the world because what's going to happen if you and I are perpetrating a fraud, he's going to kill us in the room. Already. Already. Yes. That ain't deep, isn't it? Amen. Man, I can go all the way back. I go all the way back, Sister Tina. I had to go all the way back when I was 14 when I, when I asked the Lord to Lord come into my life. Was I really serious about that? Or was I perpetrating a fraud? So how would we know? I'm going to get to the good part. I'm almost through with this part. How would we know that we are the real thing and not perpetrating a fraud? I'm glad you asked. By the fraud. By fraud. I want you to turn to the person next to you. That's how I'm going to get out of this. We'll start going along. Look him in the eye and ask him this question. 
Are you a fig or a leaf?
since 1975 to 2022. Right all of a sudden went from wrong and all of a sudden from wrong to right. Did y'all get that? God, they think they got skinny. I ain't hard though you are. God damn. Man. I got scared on. I got to do something. <laughs> okay, I get it back on side. Do, do y'all get me on that? So, so notice. Y'all hot, but I'm about to burn up. It's hot. It's hot. Nah, let me turn the oven off. But really, she's not saying nothing. Well, I ain't saying it's just seven to one. Maybe I, maybe it's me. She says so. Feel good. <laughs> now, y'all still with me? Let me see if I can turn this corner so I can sit down before I get too long. When the, when the disciples saw what was going on, and they said, you know, I said, they said, God, lead Jesus. Jesus answered and said to them, he knew what they were thinking. He says, have faith in God. Yes, yes. That's what he said. He didn't go, he, didn't, he went all the way around all that other stuff, right? He didn't go around the, around the world like I did. He says, the problem is, you do not have faith in God. So that's two kinds of faith. There's pretending faith like the, like, like the Pharisees had. But there's the place of faith. Got my P's going again. There's the place of faith. See, sometimes we get off because we have faith in the wrong place. In all place. Where do we place our faith? In God. Right. Yes. In God. Now I know that sounds crazy. Or no, that sounds obvious. But sometimes we put our faith in ourselves. Yes. You know, I can only, stuff can only happen if I can do it. We, we put our faith in our understanding. If I don't understand it, then it just can't be happening this way. So we put our faith in our understanding. Sometimes we go as far as to put our faith in our faith. Amen. And that's how, this, that's how this verse is normally interpreted. You got to put your faith in your faith. But before he told us about moving the mountains and all that other stuff, he says, where does your faith supposed to be? The place of our faith is in God. Yes. Oh, I know what I'm talking about right there. Let me tell you why. Remember I told you about the fact that back in Hosea it says if you cut a tree down, uh, if you cut it down, it might drop back up. But if you kill it at the root, there was no hope. See, when something dead, something is dead. Who I want to jump right now, Sister Lily. When something is dead, who is the only person that can resurrect the dead?
May I run out of time? See, the Bible tells us, let me see if I can hone this thing on me. The Bible says that without faith is what? Impossible. Impossible to please God. Right. So what's the main thing we ought to have when it comes to our Christian faith? Faith in God. Amen. Faith in Him. It's not about what I can do. I can't do anything. Matter of fact, I don't even know what's going to happen 30 minutes from now. Right. What do I own? Nothing. What do I possess? Nothing. What part of the future can I see? No. But we serve a God that has all power. Let me show you a little something. I'm going to sit down. I have five show I want to get over to Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Ebed over in, in Jeremiah. Go ahead and I'll go make it to him. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. Y'all been studying this in, in, in uh, you've been studying this in, 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 in uh, fulfillment hour. And if you have to come to the fulfillment hour, well, you, you shortchange yourself. We have, some, we have some discussions in there on Sunday. Remember, remember I said the uh, Hebrews tells us without faith it's impossible to please God, right? Turn to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. Now, I'm going to show you where our prosperity comes. Is this, this is where our prosperity comes. See, that's the place of faith. Place of faith. Remember that? It says, first five says, At Gilead, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I will give you. He said, Solomon, ask for whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Look at verse number 10. Now, I'm going to verse number 9. Verse 9. It says, Here's Solomon's response. I'm skipping some, some of this stuff for the sake of time. He says, Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern uh, this, your great people? He says, God gave me this blank check, and here's what I want. Wisdom to govern your people and understand right from wrong, right? Do you, do you see a gray area in there? Oh no. There's right and there's wrong. But look at verse 10. This, this, this is the greatest prosperity verse in all about. It says, And it pleased the Lord that Solomon asked this. What does it take to please God? <coughs> Faith. So if Solomon Please God, what did he have? Faith. And God, he knew that if I believe God, that God could give me the wisdom I need to do a good job, not only a good job, but a great job as a king. So it says, because he had faith in God, God gave it to him, didn't he? And God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to, dis to discern what is right, behold, I will do according to your word and give you a wise and discerning mind and so on and so forth. But look, look, go down to verse 13. I will give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all of your days. See, because he put faith in the right place, God prospered him personally. I have some other examples. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Where is the word last time. God gives us faith to help our folks. Faith is not selfish. <clears throat> Two people in the Bible, Jesus said when he was here, had great faith. It was to, it was to, it was to 
soldier, the centurion, who came and asked for help for his servant. You remember the story, right? He says, you know, he came, he was in charge of everybody. He says, my servant is sick, and I know you can help him. And Jesus said, because of your faith, your great faith. Why? Because he didn't come for faith for himself. He came for faith. He came to give help for his servant. Amen. I said, I'm going to go home. The second only person he said had great faith was the Canaanite woman. You remember, right? Her daughter was sick. And Jesus said, she, and she came, and he called her dog. I mean, that, 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 you know, you know, you know that's so sick. <coughs> he says, she said, even the dog with crumbs from under the table, right? And he said, there has not been greater faith in all of Israel. Why did they have great faith? Because their faith was to help everybody else. And when we put our faith toward helping everybody else, here's the prosperity message, then God will give us what we need to keep on taking care of everybody else. That's the place of faith. That's the place of faith. Faith is an action word. You all see what I'm saying? It's an action word. Great faith. That fig tree or the nation of Israel once again. Oh, yes, he will. He's going to resurrect. There's all old laws. No. Last thing I'm saying what about your life? Do you think all hope is gone? Do you think it's too late? Do you think your problem is so hard? Hard? Can nobody solve? situation been cursed to the road. I came here this morning with a pain of encouragement. Have faith. Have faith in God. He resurrected Christ from the dead. And he will resurrect your situation from the dead. I don't care if you think it's dead to the moon. Everybody stand.